Thank you, Mr Acting President. Um, I too would like to thank the mover of the motion, the Honourable Matthew Swinburne, um, who brings very interesting private members' business into this chamber. Um, they've always been very good to debate, and this is just another great motion that he brings to the floor. And really spoke about it with passion as well, and the experiences that he's had, um, which has inspired me to get up and speak today. Um, very devastating story to think, you know, when I was eight, year, eight years old, I had to worry about playing rugby league on the weekend. Um, and uh, Matthew's friend he met in Japan, you know, the, to think of the trauma that that person had gone through is just devastating. It makes me think about what, when I was growing up, what I thought about war and um, where it leads to and, and what effect that would have on me, for example, uh, going into the future. And I know, um, reflecting on it, that uh, you think of the Vietnam War and, and draft and, and all that sort of stuff, and that's probably what the generation before me was probably fearful for. But I do remember many conversations with friends or at a barbecue around, well, the next war won't be like that. It'll be just the matter of pushing a button. Um, and we will just have to sit back and watch what happens. Um, who pushed the button first? Who's got the bigger button? Um, that's the type of scenario that uh, I know me and my friends were contemplating that the world we're in today um, brings us to. And then you, you, you think about um, nuclear itself and how people are, I think, more educated today on the, the devastating outcomes that come with it. Um, and I know the Honourable Pierre Yang had reflected on uh, Chernobyl, but to me, that has hit very hard for me to be able to look at the history of it um, and even you know, the realism of, of the TV program that came out on it. It was just absolutely frightening to see what uh, effects could happen from, from that reactor number four um, um, blowing up. That, that, that there um, being something that wasn't used um, aggressively, that's something that happened um, by itself. To think that human beings could inflict something like that on each other um, makes me shudder. Um, and to hear just the sheer number, um, close to 14,000 nuclear weapons um, are held between nine nations. And one of those nations is run by Donald Trump. Um, <laughs> you know, you, you think... Oh, I'm just saying. Hang on, I'll, I'll get to I'll, I'll get to that now. If, I'm sorry that, that that me mentioning Donald Trump has offended you, um, but uh, but but Donald Trump had members, had in my members, mind. Members, just for one moment. This is usually a debate wow. where we actually have some real time to listen and enjoy contributions. Uh, interjections are not warranted. Thank you, Mr. Acting President. Uh, that surprised me. That interjection. Um, I think that. Uh, you know, one of the things that I think when I think Donald Trump, and there's plenty of other leaders I'll get to eventually, honourable member, um, but, you know, what he made comments recently, and you could go through hundreds of them, um, but saying that my people were out there testing for COVID-19 and we're getting all these positive results. So I told them to stop testing, and guess what? There's less COVID-19. You know, this is from a leader. <laughs> um, don't worry, it'll be great, it'll be fine, it'll be excellent. Um, you know, is that what he's going to say after he pushes the button? That, that type of power to be in the hands of a man like that is, is absolutely frightening. Um, and North Korea, you know, we've seen the issues up there and the, the conflicts in Russia and everyone seems to be uh, measuring the size of their nuclear weapons out in public um, to, to progress their, uh, their agendas, which to me is really sad state of affairs. You know, we talk about many things in this chamber, um, just, just uh, the motion before in respect of homelessness, and it was a comment made earlier, the money spent on this type of stuff could be redirected so much better. You know, the world hunger, look at the, some of the countries that can't even put food on the plate, on, on the table. Um, homelessness. There's all these things that we could be doing to make the world better, but instead we choose to, um, as countries, choose to make a bigger stand for their nuclear influence and their, their influence in war. Um, they would probably say that it's to defend themselves, but I tend to feel that it's more to progress 
their views more broadly around the world, which, again, can be done without nuclear weapons. Um, and, you know, 75 years, years on and we're still talking about and still discussing the ramifications that happened in Hiroshima um, and the outcome uh, that we've seen with all them deaths and devastation. Um, it was interesting to note um, that the discussion around the TPNW, um, that the federal government, current federal government, does not support it. Um, there's a number of re reasons that they have uh, put forward, but the underlying reason is that uh, Australians' foreign defence um, would be at risk. Now, to me, again, these discussions with UN and working together with other countries um, should be able to come to some sort of understanding that one bomb that can destroy 80,000 people um, is not acceptable to have, um, particularly with so many um, around the world. There's around, uh, I know the Honourable Alison Zamon referred to members of parliament in this chamber that uh, have signed the treaty. Um, there's around 250 Australian federal, state and territory parliamentarians that have pledged to work uh, for Australia to sign and ratify the TPNW. Um, and 79% uh, of Australian public want Australia to join. Um, that is great to see uh, Australians uh, support getting nuclear free. Um, the Australian Labor Party has committed to sign and ratify the treaty in government in December 2018 in a unanimously agreed motion moved by uh, Anthony Albanese and seconded by Richard Miles. Um, I know that unions also play a massive role in advocating and lobbying for nuclear disarmament. Um, in particular, I believe that one of the big supporters in this space is obviously the peak body of trade unions, the Australian Council of Trade Unions. And I've been a part of many rallies over the years that other unions have put together um, in, in support of seeing this uh, outcome happen across the world. Um, and that is something that I believe unions do very well, social justice, and this is a, 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 is a massive issue for everybody in this world, not just um, for the leaders. This is something that everyone has to live with the ramifications. If that button is pushed by any of these countries, you may not have had a say in it, you may not have even known about it, but you are definitely going to have to live through the consequences. Um, and them consequences are dire. Um, also, another uh, issue in respect uh, touched on Chernobyl, but you know you can't talk about nuclear disasters without Fukushima um, and the issues that happened there. I, I remember seeing a, a graphic because it was so cl close to the water um, when it happened, and that it got into the ocean. I seen a graphic um, of how far it spread across, and that uh, they found tuna over in um, in America that had, um, had uh, readings in them, you know? And that, that is just massive to think um, that one of these things going off can have ramifications across the world for so many years to come. Um, I was a proud member of um, the Australian Nuclear Free Alliance in the Northern Territory, um, and also a, bit a supporter of WANFA, the Western Australian Nuclear Free Alliance, um, that was fighting very hard against uranium in general. Um, and if we weren't mining it and we weren't getting it out of the ground, we wouldn't be creating these things in the first place. Um, and the other issue we have is when we do create this stuff and mine it and send it overseas, it ends up coming back in the form of waste, which we then have to store ourselves. Um, and a massive dispute I was a part of uh, was of this place up in the Northern Territory called Muckety which the, uh, the federal government decided was a great spot to slap a nuclear waste dump. Um, eight years of fighting um, to stop that, um, with elders disagreeing that it should be there in the first place. Um, I couldn't believe how hard we had to fight to get that decision reversed. Um, and this, you know, there's so many dangers to that. Just by creating a nuclear bomb, what's the offshoot of waste that then comes back and then potentially put into the ground that goes into groundwater, poisons water, all these type of ramifications. So I wholeheartedly support this motion. Um, I'm going to probably be a little bit corny and finish with create love, not war.